Good morning, everybody. Uh, all the attendees are just joining. It's good morning for me here. I know some of you are attending from Europe. And it's probably good afternoon. So good afternoon to all of you joining from Europe. We're just going to give it a couple of minutes uh, just for our uh, audience to join this uh, global webinar that we put up together. Uh, let's just give it a few minutes before we get started. Probably just two minutes. We still have some attendees joining. Uh, let's give it a couple of more minutes. Okay, we look like we have a lot of attendees here uh, already, probably most of them registered uh, by just going by the numbers. Let's get started here. Uh, good morning to every one of you. Good morning to all my uh, friends and customers and partners and uh, attendees from the US and go good afternoon to all our folks who are joining us today from Europe itself. Thank you for taking your time today. Uh, for making time for IBML today to learn about simplifying uh, IDP with AI itself. Uh, my name is Sushil John. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here with IBML. I'm your host today, but you don't have to listen to me for a long time because I have a very learned colleague here uh, who is going to be walking you through a uh, fantastic real, uh, real life uh, online demo uh, in real time here. Let me uh, pass it over to Ron, who will introduce himself, and then we'll get started. Thanks, Sushil. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ron Renner. I'm the Senior Software Solutions Engineer and Cloud Solutions Architect here at IBML, and it is a pleasure to show you the uh, groundbreaking improvements we've experienced in IDP. Thanks, Ron. Uh, just before we get started here, I just wanted to point out to all our audience, we do have a QA and a button at the bottom of your screen when you look at. Uh, please use the Q&A button if you want to send us a question because your mics, mics will be muted to avoid any disturbance for the uh, benefit of the larger audience itself. Uh, please send us the Q&A questions through the Q&A button and we'll try to answer you as we go along. I'll do my best to answer you uh, as we go along and some of them we can send it Ron's way at the end of the seminar, uh, uh, end of the webinar itself, uh, when we have a chance to cover that. Um, uh, this is what first of many webinars that we will be doing on this topic about how AI is improving IDP. And uh, we look forward to having you all in our future webinars too. And please look out for those invites, accept it, and join our webinars in the future too. Uh, I'm sure for every one of you on this meeting, AI is an important topic that is discussed in your organizations today. Some of you are really large organizations, I know, and some of you are smaller BPOs probably, but AI has a benefit for uh, everybody and you're all curious to see the improvements AI is bringing to AI document, uh, to intelligent document processing, to classification, extraction, and other capabilities within intelligent document processing itself. What we are about to show you today is share with you some of those, uh, one specific area relative to classification and extraction on how AI has simplified this whole process. I know some of you have never used probably classification and extraction, probably because it was too hard and too resource uh, heavy for many of you to invest in and keep it maintained. And then there are some of you who have already used uh, some form of advanced capture and IDP solutions or are currently using, but it's a pretty laborious process when it comes to setting up new documents, forms, and making all of that happen itself. And it's pretty intensive or expensive sometimes with professional services. You need to get paid to the vendor to have all of this working for you effectively not seeing a quick ROI when you make investments in these solutions itself. 
So what we are going to do today for you is really address this very specific pain point and show you how AI is simplifying the setup of uh, different types of forms, whether it is structured, unstructured, or semi-structured forms itself, and how simple it is to set up now uh, with the AI capabilities uh, within. So Ron is going to show you some magic here today uh, with all that we can, how AI has helped him with this itself. So one of the common use cases I thought that all of you could relate to, uh, we could use as a sample use case here to start with is invoices, because invoices is uh, is both a common one and something I think everybody understands, but is also a good use case to show the capabilities of uh, setting up these uh, documents, because as all of us know, invoices come uh, in all kinds of forms and shapes, uh, forms really, uh, or layouts to be very specific on uh, where the information, relevant information in an invoice is. And we've used various technologies in the past. Sometimes it has been very zonal based thing when you know all your invoices or forms are of a particular type. And uh, with invoices specifically, that was not possible uh, because uh, we know every vendor has a different looking invoice and the info relevant information in, is in different spots on the document itself. And you had to do, you probably use technologies like machine learning to teach the system, uh, the different vendors invoices and where to find the information. And once you've thought it, then automatically it processes it in the future. Nevertheless, today, Ron is going to walk us through an invoice setup right now as the first example use case to show you the power of AI and how simple it is to set up new job or a new form or new documents using the AI capabilities. With that, I want to pass it over to my learned colleague Ron here for a quick demo on invoice processing. Well, thank you, Sashil. And, uh, you know, I couldn't agree with you more on on what you said, uh, you know, it used to take a lot of effort to set up an, an invoice solution. And, you know, if you were trying to do that 10 years ago, you had to set up a template per vendor. If you tried to do it four or five years ago, you were writing lots of code or uh, you were doing a lot of uh, regular expressions or other techniques to try to track the information on invoices. And it's not to say those techniques didn't work well, but your earlier point is, is the best one. And that was, it took a lot of effort. There was always, it was always to me, the amount of iceberg under the waterline, right? On how much effort it was to stand up uh, that type of solution. So here now, uh, during, this, uh, during this webinar, I will set up an invoice solution from scratch, from baseline. And uh, of course, you're now taking a look here at uh, IBM L Cloud Capture. And let's just start from the beginning. So my first step in setting up an invoice solution, uh, let me tell you what it won't be. It won't be 500 invoices being fed through machine learning. It won't be uh, a laborious train, retrain, and retrain cycle. I'm going to start my invoice solution by simply going to my destination. And I'm going to go to content services connectors. And I'm going to add a new content type. And I'm going to call this content type AP invoice demo. And I'm going to configure the fields that I want to capture off an invoice right now. And I'm going to do that by simply typing the names of the fields in. So I'll hit next. And my first field will be a uh, vendor name. And uh, let's see, let's do invoice number. Let's do invoice date. Let's do payment terms. Let's do a uh, purchase order number. Let's do the invoice total amount. And for fun, let's do the line items. Okay. And I'm going to have that. 
I'm going to hit I am finished and then hit save. There's my list. So vendor name, invoice number, invoice date, payment terms, purchase order number, invoice total amount, line items. Those are my fields. And if I chose to at this point, but I want to keep the demo a little fast here, but I can add what are called behaviors to put specific rules on these fields. And uh, just wanted to point out that all those great IDP techniques of field links or whether a field can be blank or not blank or confidences, all of those are still in play uh, with AI. But uh, just to uh, make sure that uh, we're, we're seeing the benefit here, notice that I've just put a list of fields in. So the next question then becomes, with this new content type of AP invoice demo in this list of fields, how do I tell the AI what I want? And that's actually a very uh, easy step. And to get there, my only thing I need to do first is I need to make sure that my permissions are on for my new content type AP invoice. There we go, turned them on. I'm gonna refresh my screen. And then we're gonna go straight over and create an AI class. Now look, I know create an AI class sounds like a highly technical intimidating step, but trust me, you're gonna see it done live right here. And uh, it's as easy as this. I'm gonna name the class AP Invoice Demo. I'm gonna spell it right. And I'm gonna create a tag. And a tag is what causes everything in this system to hang together. And my tag, it's not gonna be very creative. It's gonna be AP Invoice Demo. <laughs> I like to keep things very, uh, very straightforward. I can select an example file for things that should match against the class. And I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna pick one invoice to be, uh, to give it an idea of what things in this class should look like. And I'm gonna do that. I'll pull that one in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go to my new class, AP on invoice demo. And I'm gonna hit the little blue brain button. This is how I tell the AI that these fields that I just created are the ones that I want it to pick up. Something kind of neat to notice here is that for each one of these fields, the property name, the field name, is in fact what the AI will be looking for. But uh, if I need to, I can extend that, that capture by giving it an AI hint. For example, I could tell it here under vendor name, since these are all IBML invoices that I'll show you, I could say uh, capture the vendor name. And then I can say IBML, it will never be the answer. <laughs> there we go. I can put that in and I can save that. Um, I, for my line items, I'm going to give it a little bit of a, an extended hint, and it will be in the form of an English sentence, but uh, I, as you can see from me grabbing it from my screen here, I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I already have this sentence written out. I'm just going to copy it. And we'll come right back into the product. And for line items, I'm going to tell it, and we'll see that hint here. And let me open that up for you a little. I want to capture the line item details with the co with column headers of quantity shipped, part number, description, unit price, and amount. And if for some reason the AI doesn't find those things, I always want to output the column headers at the beginning of the table, even if the table is blank. So I've got that. I've got that as a data type table so that the uh, solution knows to gather these items up and format them the way I just asked the product to do so. So I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to enable that AI class. So far, I created a list of fields for invoices. I pulled in one sample invoice only to let the AI know what kind of document I'm dealing with. 
gave it a uh, set of capture fields in the AI class and extended two of those properties with an AI hint. And an AI hint is always just a simple English sentence. It's a big jump forward from the days where we used to have to use regular expressions or code things for complex results. So I've got that saved. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. Now, next step, I'm going to build a workflow. So to build my workflow, very straightforward. I'm going to create a new workflow. In my new workflow, I'm going to keep this really tight and simple for our demonstration. But I'm going to uh, start the workflow, send it to Intuitive AI, and then we'll review what was done here in the index stage. So I'm just going to connect the dots here. Dots are connected. I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to call it, you know it, AI, or excuse me, AP invoice demo. And that tag, we're going to go right back to the tag. And that was AP invoice demo. There we go. Very good. So that is all uh, hooked together. Let me go to Intuitive AI. I'm going to just throw the tag in there too. Got that. We'll save it. We'll close it. And then very briefly as well, I'm going to create a little upload job to feed that workflow. And uh, to create that upload job, We'll just go to upload settings, up, uh, upload profiles, add a profile, and our new profile will also be called AP invoice demo. Our workflow, AP invoice demo. We could select an icon, probably don't need to do that. AP invoice demo, and it's an upload only. There we go. We are now ready. With that level of setup, we're now ready to begin to run some invoices against this to see how well it works. So let's go ahead and I'm going to refresh my screen. And we will go straight down to upload. And there's AP invoice demo. There are... Uh, these are the uh, demo folder. This is the demo files that we want to open. We're going to go ahead and just upload those. And then we'll give it just a moment or two. But uh, those uh, invoices are now uploaded to uh, IBM L Cloud Capture, processed through the new workflow that we just created against this new AI class. So if we give it just a moment, I'm going to go ahead and go to the monitor. Go down to work items, and there it is. It's in and being worked, and it should be just a minute or so in uh, working that through for the first time so that we can take a look at those results in the index panel. So while that's going through, I um, just wanted to point out that uh, if we go all the way back to the beginning of Invoice Solutions for these six separate vendors, I would have had to have created six separate templates. Uh, drawn the boxes around each one of those data points that I wanted, created something clever with code or regular expressions to try to track those line item details. And I would have had to have done it, uh, if not per every vendor, at least per vendor that was a little different. And then, you, you know, it was always, the challenge there was always in uh, trying to keep up with either changes that your current vendors were making to their invoice layouts or adding new vendors and uh, adding their uh, layouts to your solution. Uh, the beauty of the AI approach, as you saw, all I had to do was tell it what I wanted. And uh, in the AI class, maybe explain a little more deeply what I wanted in simple English sentences and then be able to run the documents against that and have the AI find and capture the info. And here they are, they're ready for us to take a look at them. 
So we'll go to the index panel, all work items, and uh, there's my AP invoice demo. And let's take a peek here at our results. So first item, vendor name found as Jason Belt Corp, right up here in the corner. I'll do a little bit of a zoom here to get you a little bit better view of what's going on. Again, without pre-training, without zoning, without machine learning, without any of those iterations, Jason Belcorp invoice number uh, found up here at the top, uh, invoice date also captured, uh, found uh, over here, and uh, our terms, net 45, purchase order number, the invoice total amount, uh, of course, found here as total invoice price. Again, distance didn't matter. The change in wording didn't matter. I didn't have to build a list of the possible variations to what total invoice amount would be. The AI knows that contextually and intuitively. And of course, let's take a look at our line item detail. And again, with just that pretty straightforward English sentence, get me quantity ship, part number, description, unit price, and amount, format them this way and put these column headers on. We're grabbing the uh, quantity shipped, the part numbers, the description, the unit price, and the amount. And something I think is really cool, notice that these line items are stacked vertically instead of horizontally. And the AI is picking them up by being able to understand this little column header that tells it the first line is part, the second number is revision, the third is description, and the fourth is detail. And being able to find that part number is the first line and find that description starting down there on the third line. Truly very powerful uh, a way to process these type of documents. We'll go through a few more. Totally different layout, Phoenix Metal. Uh, we're pulling the invoice number here, uh, invoice date here. Extended terms here, half a percent, TET, NED 30, customer PO number, invoice total amount, and of course, our line item detail, single line on this one being pulled out, pulled out and grabbed appropriately. Let's take a look at one more uh, here at McMaster Car. Everything is consolidated in this one up here on the top left. Again, found all of it, even with variations in how these items are labeled on the document. Uh, total amount purchase order number, the terms, all of that grabbed right here off the document. And of course, our two line items right here out of the table, uh, quantity shipped, the part number, uh, the description, unit price, and amount, all grabbed appropriately. Uh, one more, we'll do one more. Uh, here on the uh, Masumi, uh, uh, grab that one as well. Uh, invoice number, invoice date, payment terms, net 30 days. Purchase order number found, total invoice found, and the single line item found there as well. So as you can see, uh, that was not a lot of setup to get these type of results uh, right away. And as such, I think it really demonstrates well the absolute power of AI-based uh, uh, document processing, not just of invoices, but of any kind. Those steps were create that list of fields, uh, then uh, move those into an AI class, explain to the AI if needed. Remember, I only explained to the AI on um, two fields. I told it the vendor could never be IBML, and I told it what to grab for the line items. Otherwise, the AI is simply using for invoice number, invoice date, payment terms, purchase order number, invoice total. It's just using the field name as its prompt for capture. Oh, one last item before we move on, and that is where the AI finds this data on the document is where the gray rectangle is drawn. So as you saw, uh, when, when it found that vendor name, it found it here, put the gray rectangle around it. And notice, I think this is really uh, interesting as well. Notice that it knows who the vendor on the invoice is contextually. It doesn't have the word vendor colon in front of it or uh, a phrase as vendor after it. Uh, a, the AI knows intuitively what we mean contextually when we tell it to capture the vendor name on an invoice, for example.
So again, really a great uh, uh, demonstration, if you will, of the power of this type of setup and technique. Ron, that was a great demo. That I, I literally was counting the minutes here while you were going through the demo. It just took you 12 minutes to set up an entire invoice processing demo and then eight minutes to show all its capabilities, right? Actually feed documents through it. That's, uh, I can't imagine just a few years ago or even like two years ago, if somebody wanted to extract line items from an invoice, I mean, we had to wait for a couple of days before we showed the demo to a customer uh, itself. This is really amazing, Ron. Oh, thank you, Sushio. And it really is uh, amazing that we can go from nothing to an invoice demo in, a, in about 12 minutes. Uh, and those setup times were really were the, the real constraint on how quickly you could get something uh, uh, up and going. So with that in mind, uh, one of the biggest challenges we had uh, in the industry has always been mortgage documents. And Let, you, let's you, talk about that in, in a short while, uh, Ron. So uh, really, I think the use case you wanted, uh, we wanted to talk about here is I think every one of our customers has this need to uh, separate documents, right? Uh, as, as they get in, you know, either customers spend a lot of time preparing documents with document separators and so on so that we can separate documents and classify them properly while the scanning process is on. Or otherwise, after scanning, they spend a lot of time where people manually look for beginning and end of documents and classify them and separate them and identify them itself. So I know mortgage is a great use case to show this because especially in the US, uh, typical mortgage document can be anywhere between 500 to 700 pages with all kinds of documents within it, right? Uh, why don't you walk us through this use case specifically about separation and classification, uh, Ron, and show us you know, how, how the AI behaves. We really don't want to walk through the setup process here. We really want to give a sense to our audience here of how effective uh, the separation and classification, and maybe you can hit the high points about uh, the setup itself and uh, how simple it was. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, mortgage always represented that huge challenge, right? Lots of different document types um, coming, uh, oftentimes coming in in a folder, undifferentiated. They're, they're in the folder and uh, you'll, you could have hundreds of pages in, in one mortgage alone. Um, you know, being able to, in the older technologies, being able to classify a document meant having to have uh, you know, dozens of samples of each document type and very carefully building complex regular expressions to try to pull the data after, uh, out of them after we had classified the doc. So the beauty of the AI approach is you know, for any particular mortgage doc type, we just have to, you know, just like I did for invoice, for any particular mortgage doc type, I would create that doc type and its uh, capture fields. And I can actually then set up that doc type with one or a handful of samples, just pull them in. So what that allows us to do is once those are set up, and as you can see, they can be set up very rapidly per document type, uh, then that means that we can be able to take an undifferentiated mortgage folder, drop that into the system, allow it to break that document into uh, the, the correct, uh, or break that large folder into the correct documents, classify them, and pull off the uh, relative data off of those. And, you, you know, we have always been very much a solution for mortgage documents. And uh, in you know, in previous IDP uh, offerings, it would take a lot. It would take an underlying library with hundreds of mortgage documents in it to be able to even begin this process. So with that in mind, Sushil, I set up a very basic mortgage uh, workflow and I took one of the old mortgage test files. It has 75 pages in it. And I dropped all 75 pages in as one PDF in here, 
is the result. Here we go. So took all took that 75 page PDF, one big PDF dropped it in and allowed the software to run it through, break it into the correct documents. There are 37 documents here in the test file. And of those 37, uh, go ahead and first uh, tell me what the document type is. Go ahead and figure out what that document is. And then I gave it a set of you know pretty standard mortgage capture fields. Loan ID, name a lender, lender address, property address, borrower, all those things, if they happen to be on that particular doc. And in conducting that test of the old mortgage test file, I was delighted to see that I was getting results that were as good as or better than our old mortgage library uh, right away with this particular technique and approach. So just walking through uh, without an extended set of underlying documents, without having to give it dozens of samples of uh, this special instructions to settlement agent closing loan agreement uh, absolutely grabs that as the document type to find the loan ID number, name of lender, lender address. Second document says, hey, this is a loan settlement instruction. The gray rectangle tells you where it decided that information was. Loan ID, lender, settlement date, loan officer, all that great stuff grabbed. Uh, the uh, property address, lender address, interest, name of borrower, loan amount, all found in the document. The closing conditions document, also classified uh, exactly uh, as it is here with the loan number on it and uh, adjustable rate note. Uh, doing some things that are really difficult in older solutions. Like here, I'm finding the property address above the notice for where property for a property address and it's not an easy address to find because it's not a block address it's a it's an address as a single line grab that with no more of a ai hint than property address it's all i told it to find classified as adjustable rate note five year treasury index uh, rate cap here's the adjustable rate rider also classified and separated Adjustable rate uh, mortgage loan program disclosure, uh, classified and separated. Next one it breaks on is the deed of trust. And by break, I mean breaks up the big PDF, not break the software. And uh, here it's a 10-page deed of trust. Above was a two-page adjustable rate uh, disclosure, three-page adjustable rate rider. After that, we've got the Allonge endorsing the mortgage note. One page, a closing disclosure, which would be one of the new RESPA forms. I remember when those were released, how everyone was scrambling to come up with templates or, or app devs or fingerprints to try and handle this new document. And again, handled in line with <laughs> these prompts uh, from the AI. Itemization of financed amounts. We can go through all of these. You'll probably get uh, bored faster than me with all 37. But just looking down the list here in the work panel, flood insurance certification notices, uh, SSA 89s, uh, the uh, authorization to the Social Security uh, Administration, uh, agency selection uh, for hazard, uh, housing council notices, an amortization schedule. I don't know why those were so hard to classify in last generation solutions, but since they're just big tables of numbers, they were. All of these found, separated, classified appropriately by using uh, IBML Cloud Capture and the AI-based approach. That's that's fantastic, Ron. This this really means for our customers who are spending a lot of time today, uh, uh, time and labor today, uh, separating documents. They really don't have to do that and have this solution figure that out itself for them, right? Absolutely. That's, there's one more thing that comes before I, I know we are running uh, close to the finish time here, Ron. Uh, before we wrap up for today's webinar, I was uh, interested, uh, I was hoping that you would be able to show one of the capabilities that everybody speaks about generative AI is uh, its ability to summarize things for us and generate content on its own itself, which earlier took a lot of manual effort for people to read through documents and do that. 
why don't you show us something very quick here? We have a couple of minutes left on summarization itself. Perfect, Sushil. And I think the best demo of that are legal documents. I'm going to show you four documents. They total 42 pages. They're 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 court cases. They're legal uh, documents, consent orders, and look, it's a lot to plow through to read through. And they're in legalese. They're all whereas statements. And here, I've asked the AI to give us a uh, 50 word summary of the document. This one. This one uh, goes ahead and says that uh, the document is a consent order and assessment of a civil money penalty and uh, just walks us through very quickly uh, what's going on in all 10 pages. There is no summary in this document. This summary is AI generated. And as such, you know, it gives you that fast way of knowing what's in the document. Next one is a complaint order. Same deal. Uh, you know, there are four pages here. You can go through the entire document, but why not go ahead and just get a short summary that this is a complaint filed by Layla Jones against Jim Smith. Uh, there's the amount of damages, et cetera. Next one, different consent order, same deal. The ability to just go ahead and pull out uh, that summary of the document itself in nice, concise language, uh, really a great feature for complex documents like this where you might need a summary to get in front of someone to have them read that summary and then make the decision, do I need to read the larger document or you know, somehow push this into a workflow? It's also a great application uh, of the technology for our, uh, our mailroom clients where being able to take that mail piece, look at all the pages in it and then produce a fast summary of that uh, is super helpful in being able to figure out, uh, you know, is this mail piece actionable? Is it something we need to look at? Is it something that we need to route into a specific workflow? That's great summary uh, there, uh, Ron. Thank you so much for explaining uh, today uh, how AI is simplifying the setup uh, process in, in IDP itself. Uh, I hope our customers are really excited about this new capabilities and uh, are more motivated now to adopt IDP solutions into their business processes itself and make it really truly transformative in that sense. Uh, uh, any closing comments, Ron, before I can share something on the screen? Just that in uh, 30 years in the industry, uh, in IDP solutions exclusively, the entirety of my career, we have been waiting for this for three decades to be able to just tell the software what we want, have the software figure it out, grab it, and bring it back. It's really the most amazing leap forward I've seen in, in a career that spans three decades in the industry. Yeah, thanks, Ron. So for as we wrap up this uh, session here itself uh, pretty quickly and open it up for some questions, uh, I just wanted to quickly point out to our customers, now, if what you saw today is uh, interesting to you and you want to actively and you have an immediate pain point that you want to talk to us about and engage in a conversation, uh, the best way and easiest way for you to do is go to our website, ibml.com. There's consult and expert button and uh, hit that, fill, hit that fill the form and uh, uh, one of us will be in touch with you. One of our experts will be in touch with you sh shortly uh, uh, itself uh, about your requirements. The other option is if you're still not ready to take that next step and you want to really try what Ron just spoke about, we really have a live demo on our website that you could go and try with your own documents and your own prompts. For experiencing that, go to our product section here Choose IBML Cloud Capture, and you can read and understand everything you need to know about IBML Cloud Capture here in this page. But you'll notice this little button here called Trial the Software Now. Hit Trial the Software Now. It's going to ask you for your first name, last name, and your contact details. Submit it. And once you submit it, you will be able to experience the actual software. Uh, it's a simplified interface, not the entire software, but it's really the software running at the back end where you can provide it some prompts, what type of document you're trying to extract, 
and then feed it a couple of documents and see the results itself so that you know everything we spoke about today is real and it is simple to set up without any training and you can go ahead and engage uh, to find out how we can solve your specific problems better. With that, I'm going to stop sharing and call this a wrap for the presentations itself today. Once again, thank you very much for your overwhelming uh, response to this webinar and be making the time here to be here today. Uh, I hope you were able to find this pretty informative and useful to your content. Please do provide us your feedback. Uh, more importantly, please look out for our next invite. And the next one is going to be uh, using AI to improve handwriting recognition, not just constrained handwriting, but cursive handwriting recognition itself. Thank you.